consumers can be a demanding bunch, especially when it comes to dairy products. We want a product that has little or no fat, but we still want it to be creamy. We want a healthier product, but with the best flavour possible and with no additives, please. It's a big ask. At Chalkus Research Centre in Moor Park in Cork, Mark Auty is looking at food in a very special way to try and give us what we want. One of the key areas of Mark's research focuses on creaminess in dairy products, especially yogurts. The research we do here is in dairy, as you can see from these cows. Ireland produces a lot of good, very good quality milk and the Irish food industry needs to add value to that in order to export it into a growing market. And the work that I do is mainly con concentrated on food structure. Um, so I have a range of different tools uh, in what we call is the National Food Imaging Centre, which is the first of its kind in the world. The creamy texture can be lost in low-fat yogurts, and some food manufacturers try to get the feeling back by adding gum or other additives. Mark and his team are looking at alternative natural solutions using highly sophisticated microscopes. So we have machines here where we can image individual molecules through to the nano and the microstructures that they form. So it's to try and understand uh, the structure of food, how it behaves, how the industry can make it better in response to the demands from the consumer. By working with these highly detailed microscopes, they are able to view low-fat yogurt samples right down at the molecular and nanoscale. Vivian Gee is one of the PhD students working with Mark at Chalkusk. So what did you see when you started looking at it under the microscope? Well, what we saw with the regular low-fat yogurt was that we had large fat globules. They are about two microns and that kind of ranged as well. Um, and we saw the nice protein structure that you're getting in a normal yogurt. And when we looked at it on a nanoscale using the electron microscope, what we found is that we confirmed that the fat globules are large. Um, the protein structure is kind of intact as well, so you're getting discrete fat and protein. In homogenized milk, the fat is evenly dispersed through the milk so the cream no longer rises to the top. Mark and his team were keen to see what would happen if they increased the intensity of that process. They used a high-speed mixing process called microfluidization to create unique particles of fat and protein which had a big impact on the creaminess of the yogurt. So Owen, um, it doesn't look that much different to when it went in. Well, I think that it looks a bit whiter and uh, myself, but, and that's because the, the size of the particles has been reduced. However, you really see the reduction in particle size when you look at it under the microscope yeah. with Vivian. It looks like milk that we buy in the supermarket. Yeah. But at an atomic level, it's completely changed. Yes, yeah. I really want to have a sip of it. Don't. <laughs> so you were thinking that if you put it through the microfluidization process, you'd break up the fat, which yes. would disperse it more. We'd change the structure, and hopefully, with the change in structure, you'd get a change in mouthfeel. And that's exactly what we saw. Looking at the microfluidized version, the first thing that struck us was how small the fat actually became. So it was about 10 times smaller in fat size than you got in the normal yogurt. Um, another thing that made our day was when we looked at it under the electron microscope and what struck us was the very different structures that were made. So in the other one you're getting kind of individual fat globules with maybe some proteins attached, but here we're getting these nano clusters of fat with protein all surrounding it. And what was interesting about that was that you were getting a higher surface area of fat and you were getting a lot of protein surrounding your fat. And that also contributes to the nice texture and mouthfeel of your yogurt. We never knew that there were these nano structures produced and we can relate those to creaminess. Um, so that, that was a major surprise, I suppose, and a lot of that. Uh, work that we've done has been published in the international literature. It's extraordinary to be able to look at food at this minute level and you can clearly see the difference in the size of the fat particles. I need to taste this for myself. Okay, so we'll taste some yogurts now. This is the bit that I mainly look <laughs> forward to. So we have three yogurts here and um, I just want you to try them in 
this order and tell me which one you think is creamier and how much more creamy. Okay, so 896. Yes, please. Looks delicious. <laughs> You can. So texture, you can also see the texture as well as feeling it within the mouth. So so is this microfluidized yogurt? Yes. There you are, science at work. Thank you. You're welcome. It's delicious. <laughs> so I've tasted the low-fat creamy yogurt. When will we be able to buy it in the supermarkets? Well, as soon as we can get uh, the industry on board and we will need to get an inline version of the microfluidizer that you saw working. Um, that was a batch process. Um, if we can get a, a similar machine put in line, then hopefully we'll, we'll see these products coming on stream as the industry takes them up. Mm. So it's a, pretty, it's a pretty big deal to have invented a new type of yogurt that's like naturally low fat. Well, I think so. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs>